Sup folks, how's it going and welcome to another Tutorial Thursday Titty And today I'm gonna show you how you can color grade S-Log3 footage the way I do Let's begin Hmm, Titty Very recently I uploaded a short film called Only Friends And uh, people ask me how I color grade my stuff Because they shoot on the same cameras I shoot on But their footage never looks as good and that obviously has multiple reasons color grading is just the last thing you do the first thing is like the good lighting camera settings a good lens and then in the end eventually you have to color grade your footage and this is what we're talking about today i try to make it as simple as possible for you because there's many ways to color grade s-log footage and why do we even shoot on s-log in that case s-log 3 s-log 3 looks very washed out it's very gray and it's like why would you shoot in a color profile like that it, it looks terrible and it does but it gives us a wider dynamic range so from the darks to the bright brightest uh, point it's we have the biggest dynamic range and that this is why we shoot in s-lock if we didn't shoot in s-lock and our footage would look like this already we wouldn't have as much room to uh, to color grade anymore all the bright spots in the background would be just white and we couldn't get this information back but because we shoot in s-log 3 we have a wide dynamic range from the dark spots to the brightest we have a lot of information to work with so the first thing you do is if you want to make this footage look like this is you create an adjustment layer in premiere so how do we do this we click here down here on new item adjustment layer click ok that gives us this adjustment layer then we drag and drop this on top of our footage okay as you can see nothing happened okay because an adjustment layer is pretty much uh, a layer which doesn't do anything unless you give him a purpose like in our case we want to give this adjustment layer color information which is going to adjust all the layers underneath with the information we gave it to so for example if we have this layer here everything on top of this layer is not going to be affected which it makes sense if you have a logo an intro you don't want the color grade affect these things only your actual footage okay next step is you need to download a lot okay you can color grade without lots too but this is a different tutorial complete different workflow we want to color grade with a lot to make it easier for us and to make it easier for you I'm providing a link in my description just go and download s-log3 or download s-log2 lot and then you can download this little thing it looks like this it's called s sony s log 3 to rec 709 lot blah 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 download this after you download this go to window and then workspaces then color and now this thing on the right appears lumetri color this is what we're going to work with and then go to creatives and then on look click on look and don't do that under basic correction very important that go under creatives look and then you can browse and look for the thing you just downloaded and find it and after you found it click on open and that is going to make it appear in your list which i have already and when you click on it that gives us a first look it removes the s log look and makes it look like normal footage this is the very first most important move if you shoot on s log 2 though if you shoot on s log 2 then you take the other one then you would go on on s log 2 but i shot an s log 3 so I won't use that sometimes when I shoot with my drone my drone shoots in s-log2 this is the the lot I'm using for my drone but for this camera or all my cameras I'm sh uh, shooting in s-log3 so this is our look now and that already looks so much better than before right next step what I do and everything I do is my personal taste it doesn't mean that this is like the only way but it's a very good start to uh, to color grade your footage so here on our left we have some indicators which help us to not 
overexpose our footage, underexpose or oversaturate and all these things. When I click this off, you see that our uh, brightest don't go higher than, what is it, 88. Our darkest don't go lo lower than, what is it, like 15. When I click on our LUT, you see, okay, some things go over 100, which you don't want usually, and some things are not even touching zero. So that tells me that my footage is still overexposed, which is great. That means I still have room to increase the contrast a little bit, crush the shadows, crush the shadows, crush the shadows. That's going to make our footage look great. So the first thing after the, the LUT, what I do is increase the sharpness because I like to over sharpen my footage, my, my short films a little bit. You don't have to do that. I like to do that. So. The next one is Vibrance. Vibrance is almost like saturation. It increases the sun colors and don't go to 100. You never want to overdo anything. Like 25 is a great amount. And then if you still don't like it, if you still think, okay, it has to be more saturated, you can increase the saturation a little bit to give everybody more color. Then I go to basic color correction. These I wouldn't touch unless you can tell, okay, you messed up the white balance. It looks way too uh, red or way too blue. Then you can fix it here. But in the beginning, I usually don't touch it at first at least. So contrast is the first one I increase. Then I go down with the highlights. That brings down all the information from all the bright spots in the background. And that example brings all that back. And because I increased the contrast, you see in the hair how I lose information. To bring information back in the dark spots, I bring up the shadows a little bit. You see, now I have the hair back. Now, just a little bit, I bring the whites up, just a little, just a little bit, and the blacks down. So everything was supposed to be black, which basically is just noise at this point. I just crushed completely, so it's just black, and all everything was white. I'm just gonna make it a little whiter, but these two are optional. Then I have another saturation button, which I usually don't touch, but if you still think, okay, that could be more saturated, you can do it there. And then, like I said, if you think, okay, uh, it looks a little yellowish, you can bring it to blue, you can play around with that a little bit, but this is really a matter of taste. I like to keep my uh, films as natural as possible. If any, I correct to blue, but really depends on who is in front of your camera. If I shoot my own vlogs and you know, I like my blue eyes, for example, and I like to correct towards blue. This is what I like to do, but it really depends on who am I shooting and who's in front of my camera. Anyways, also a great way to give yourself, uh, give your footage a certain look. I like to bring the shadows, for example, to green, but the highlights to blue, and that gives me like a nice color contrast. And I like it to make it subtle, you know, don't go too crazy. This is also optional. Vignette. Vignette means you increase the darkness on the edges. Like when I go extreme, you see how, how dark the edges are here? Now you can see it better. So here too, I like to do it just a little bit for like the vlogs, where I'm really mostly in the center of my video. When I'm talking, as this is, I'm gonna go with the roundness up the midpoint until I'm not in the frame anymore. And then the amount just a little bit and then the feather usually up. But for short films like this, let me remove everything. Either don't use it at all because it can look a little cheesy or just, just a little bit. So because like a vignette, basically guides the viewer's eye, tells the viewer where am I supposed to look. Sometimes I do even uh, manual vignettes, like, okay, I want only her to be brighter, her to be darker, or vice versa. Um, but this is obviously lots of work and you have to do the clip by clip individually. Last one, if I still don't like the contrast, I go to curves, bring the whites up, or not the whites, the highlights up a little bit, and the shadows down a little bit. And that gives me like a nice, crisp contrast. So now let's check out the before after again. 
That is why it's so important to color grade your footage. Some people they just shoot an S log and this is how they edit and this is how they ex uh, export. This is how, how everybody's seeing this. And this is just such a waste because there's so much potential in this, in this, uh, in this footage, you know? And yeah, that's how you do that. I do a full look on everything pretty much or for every scene individually. And then when I go through my footage, sometimes when I'm like, oh, she's a little darker than the other one. So I gotta increase her brightness a little bit or her shadows a little bit. But I do that event, uh, individually on those clips. See, I click those clips, then I adjust it, you know? So I'm not affecting our actual color grade. Okay, this is still our, our, our uh, color grade, our look. This is not affected. I'm just talking about each clip individually. Sometimes you have to go through every clip until you like what you see. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial Thursday. I hope you learned something. If you haven't seen my short film yet, you can see the link up here. It's called Only Friends. It's very funny. I got uh, many positive feedback. So go check it out and see you in the next video and have a beautiful rest of your tutorial Thursday. To do. Yeah.